Lower ending stocks for corn and soybeans in the USA. Jerry Gidell is ready to weigh in in all the commodity markets impacting issues. Right here on Connected Farmer, your channel to keep you up to date with the latest trends in agriculture and livestock. So, Jerry, before we jump into your estimates for ending stocks for both corn and soybeans, I want uh, to hear from you uh, your, your analysis about the rally for soybeans uh, this Friday. We sort of uh, anticipated that uh, last week and the week prior to that. Yeah, we've had some positives at the end of the week, the last few weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, it kind of petered out, uh, and then we bounced back last Friday again. Uh, it, it's a scenario maybe of uh, last week was more involving rain activity and slowing down harvest. Today, I think it was basically into the uh, uh, post-harvest mentality here. We were at 60% on corn last week, or virtually there at 59. We were at 76 on beans. And so there's not much stuff out there. This week has been another kind of uh, d defensive market here uh, after the bounce we had last weekend. Uh, and that uh, with the the market really uh, worried uh, more about uh, uh problems in the Black Sea and things of that nature. And the, we had some concerns that there for a while that we're, weren't shipping stuff out of there. But in reality, it looked like it was a pause uh, of some ships out there and it came back, relatively well, speaking, but uh, per se. Uh, right now, though, uh, today's performance uh, was a combination of decent uh, uh, weekly export sales, nothing spectacular, but solid kind of numbers there at around 30, 35 million, met, uh, million bushels in both corn and beans. Beans particularly in his thing is really starting to get sensitive about what's happening in South America. Uh, from there, uh, more and more reports here that uh, uh, with, without rain in the northern parts of uh, Brazil, they're going to have to have some significant rain, uh, excuse me, significant uh, replants. Uh, from there, and similar situation uh, in Paraná and Rio Grande in the south, where they've had issues of too much rain. So what, what a strange situation there for Brazil. Uh, Argentina has been a little shaky, too. Uh, they haven't been maybe pushing as much of their first batch of plantings down there because of the dryness. We did have some rains 10 days, two weeks ago, but nothing since. So it's been a real... Uh, head scratcher about what's going to happen here with the El Nino that's been around for a while, but hasn't really done the kind of normal situation that we expect at this point uh, on providing moisture out uh, for the South American producers to get their 2023-24 uh, soybeans and even corn even in the ground at this point. Yeah, and I, what I think was striking also uh, this week was that the, there were record numbers of uh, wheat imports from by China. Yes, yes, there was uh, reports that both uh, Argent, excuse me, uh, Australia and uh, uh, France both sent some uh, some significant amount of uh, wheat. Uh, I think it was two and a half and uh, to, from our excuse me, two and a half from. Uh, Australia and 2 million metric tons from France. And that really is going back to last summer's un, uh, unfortunate and untimely uh, rain event that hit the Hunan uh, province, which is their big uh, wheat producing area that uh, really uh, turned a lot of their wheat uh, into feed. And so they're out there looking around for supplies and uh, the U.S. doesn't have a lot of extra wheat to sell them. Uh, plus, at this point, the Chinese are looking all different places other than the U.S. to buy anything except maybe beans uh, at this point. Corn's going to be interesting. I think they're still going to have to come back to us uh, here later this year in the first quarter of 2024 for corn. But right now, uh, we're shipping a lot of stuff already. Surprisingly, we're ahead of last year's paces on 
on uh, corn shipments and also sales at this point. Uh, but last year was very, very poor seasonally. So well, right at this point, they're still somewhat on target for our $2 billion number the USDA has at this point from that part of the world. But we was uh, positive, but it didn't finally get, catch to help us uh, here with the uh, demand coming out of China until today. That's another market that's uh, been dominated by the Russians for so long at this point, and uh, they're just keep pounding it to get their stuff out of there. And uh, so... Uh, the price points on wheat, uh, and to some extent, the U.S. Uh, plantings are somewhat on target and averaging. I don't know that it's, it's in great shape. It's, it was reported at 47 percent here on Monday of this week. That's up from 28 percent last year, I think it was. Uh, but uh, that really isn't a, f a fantastic, uh, good and excellent level. Uh, basically, uh, the Eastern Corn Belt with the, some moisture is uh, the one that... Um, is in good shape while the plain states still have a lot of dry spots out there that's dragged down the average. Yes, so jumping into your November uh, stock estimates, you are expecting a significant reduction of uh, uh, stocks, ending stocks in the U.S. for both corn and soybeans. If that's confirmed, there will be another rally uh, in the upcoming week? I, I think that is a possibility. Uh, if it does happen, we are in that area. The The, the interesting twist on it right now is, is that uh, past histories of uh, looking at the USDA's uh, monthly production reports, which is a combination of how much harvested acres we have times our yield, and that uh, we have, uh, when we've had September and October uh yields in essence production numbers being lower and that there seems to have been a past history of a unchanged maybe slightly higher type numbers and that interestingly enough what is what happened here with the reuters numbers that came out here this afternoon i think uh, there's a lot of people have noticed this trend in the past uh in essence here uh the uh Reuters numbers for U.S. beans uh, basically is unchanged 4.103 versus 4.104 billion bushels with an unchanged yield. Uh, and that actually Reuters uh, is numbers uh, really conservative versus uh, the Bluebird numbers that had about a 10 or 15 million increase. Uh, and the corn number today that they came up with on the trade average guess uh, was 15 billion, 79 million. Uh, which is up uh, 15 million from the USDA's number last month. And, and so that's a, uh, officially made a two tenths increase in their yield uh, to 173.2. I guess uh, I kept looking at the uh, potential of the crop areas west of the Mississippi, uh, so Iowa, Minnesota, uh, Nebraska, and certain spots. Uh, Missouri, Kansas, and, and boy, that that area has really had a difficult time here in the August, late August, September, even into October. Here, uh, there just wasn't a lot of moisture out there, and, and now to some extent, you say, well, you know, the impact of, of of yields in October is pretty minimal. I totally agree with that. The one interesting twist, though, that impacts yields is the fact is what does the moisture of the crop turn out to be uh, when it's harvested. And uh, we've had uh, some uh, talks at times here of seeing beans uh, yields, uh, or excuse me, bean moisture contents coming into elevators at 10%, maybe even a few below that. And 13%, uh, you can still get number one kind of beans. So 3%, that's a big difference right there as an example. Corn, similar situation, 15, uh, 15 and a half is officially uh, moisture content for beans in corn, or excuse me, for corn. Uh, and that, boy, if you're going to give, uh, bring it the elevator at 11% uh, or less uh, on your uh, moisture content, that's great for your drying cost, by the way, uh, from the standpoint of uh, extra expense there. But at the same time, you don't, that percentage of, uh, uh, unfortunately, the uh, U.S. does not pay you uh, in volumes of bushel baskets. They, they 
pay you in 56 pound uh, corn and 60 pound uh, beans. Now, if you get uh, 61 pound beans, you're kind of compensate for some of that uh, uh, lower uh, moisture content. But uh, that's the real twist of this thing is that we're in a situation here in the U.S. where I think some subtleties might have came along. Now, do I think that's uh, dramatically different? Uh, it's not huge changes at this point. But the twist of this is, is that in the past history of this uh, oh, U.S. corn relation, uh, deal relationships, when we're looking at September, October, and then looking at the final number, we've tended to also find that even if it did make uh, a minor increase this month, it has come back down and, and pretty significantly in the final number. So I think it's going to be an interesting scenario on this thing. Uh, right at this point, I think if we're staying right around unchanged, a little up, a little down uh, from there, the market's going to really concentrate on the idea that they need to, to, and this being the commercials, need to get a hold of a certain percentage of crop here so they can uh, get it ready for processing in the U.S. and also in exports uh, uh, around the country at this point. It's going to be a little difficult getting it down the, uh, the Mississippi River, but in the past, the China's really liked to see the, a lot of their supplies go off the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and, and that makes some sense because even our issues here uh, in uh, the U.S. about the Mississippi running low, same things happening in the, on the Panama Canal. And so that means you can't end up getting as big a loads going through there. So uh, I suspect that that's uh, a potential area that we're going to see some of the uh, uh, Pacific Rim uh, buyers look to the uh, uh, Portland and Seattle here for shipments off the West Coast here uh, and that. So I'm not sure, you know, we're going to have a total bust on our exports just because the Mississippi is running low. And the snow season in some states has already started. <laughs> yes, it has. That always sparks a little more enthusiasm about getting supplies closer to home and in your backyard or in your shed or someplace else. Uh, uh, again, on Thanksgiving, uh, excuse me, Thanksgiving, on Halloween, uh, this we had a big snowstorm uh, in Chicago in 2019. We had three and a half inches of snow and blowing and all this kind of stuff. This time, we had about uh, half to uh, an inch in the afternoon of Halloween. So uh, uh, it was a little chilly out there in our local uh, Halloween safety corner where we give away... Uh, uh, apple juice and uh, and munchkin donuts so but uh, it worked out well and uh, and uh, it didn't seem to slow the crowds down we had a pretty good uh, bunch of people stop by and enjoy the treats yes and what about uh, what do you expect uh, about next week well it's all going to be tied into what's going on with this uh, uh the usda numbers that we just kind of threw around here uh we talked about the production numbers along the way. The one thing we didn't uh, kind of, you pointed out right at the bat that the, the stocks numbers were the ones that uh, is really what these markets are going to be watching at this point, particularly if, if our demand lo levels stay the same here uh, as I anticipate, because it really, we had some pretty solid numbers. We had a good uh, uh, release for September here, a record level for soybean crush. And at the same time, uh, our ethanol uh, demand numbers jump back dramatically after a kind of a slow start in or a slow period in, in August when they were kind of deciding to uh, do some uh, uh, plant, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, plant uh, uh, downtime to get some of their things working. They've been working at a pretty fast race on that. But it turns out that interestingly enough, uh, my uh, stock numbers, the USDA's uh, number in September for beans was 220 million. Per, and I thought, well, if they we're going to have a slippage of about 20 million, we should be around 200 on the carryover stock. The trade came in with a 2.22, 2 million up uh, on that number. Uh, so interestingly, if uh, that's really similar to their production number, if for some reason whether really we get a slight increase uh, in the production, I don't know that there's going to USDA is going to can't 
uh, you know, Tain uh, jumped that stock number up. The other, of course, is the corn. Uh, last month, we had a number of 2.11 uh, billion bushels. Uh, the, the average trade guess is 2.13, so that's 20 million up. Uh, and that kind of reflects the uh, 15 million increase in the production number that Reuters came up with here from the trade. So, uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of adjustments. I'm looking, like you pointed out, for about a 70 million increase, a decrease, I should say, in the U.S. crop. That's not much. It's, uh, I think that's taken uh, the, the, the average yield down to seven tenths, eight tenths of a bushel. Uh, so I'm 172.2 uh, on that number versus the 173 last month uh, in that. And so uh, those are numbers that, uh, interestingly enough, I think my numbers could spark a, a little faster uh, bounce in the market. I'm not sure that a number that came out of Reuters here would be a negative number because the other problem is is that the producer out there uh, has to get negative about the number. And if he doesn't like the price, I think he's not going to react and sell something uh, just because maybe we got 20 million more beans or we got, uh, let's just say, uh, 50 or 75 million more corn. <coughs> Excuse me. No, voice is running out of steam. But it turns out that uh, in that case, I'm going to anticipate this market to be on the firm tone uh, after the report on uh, Thursday of next week. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, going to be interesting as where we come about and, and the updates for the end of the week. Right at this point, I suspect that today's numbers will kind of you know, put things on kind of a slow uh, projection here uh, on early part of the week. After Tuesday, usually there's the markets just don't want to deal with anything ahead of USDA reports. So uh, we'll have to see what our uh, progress numbers are and things like that on Monday night. But right now, at least, I'm kind of anticipating a kind of a slow burn up. And then we'll see what the market wants to do. It's uh, After this report on Thursday, we're only going to have two weeks till Thanksgiving. And that has been a traditional time for a seasonal kind of highs and things. And also, the 1st of December, uh, every year we seem to uh, close the, the upper Mississippi north of St. Louis. And so that's another feature that's one of the traditional uh, uh, events in here that always has an important uh, kind of emotional uh, period for the markets to try to get themselves sorted out before the winter uh, conditions kind of slow down all our transportation in the U.S. All right. Thank you very much, Jerry. It's always good, and we'll uh, see if uh, we can get a little bit more spark in this market. I'm still optimistic about fourteen dollars on January beans and corn. We took our took a little uh, chop out of that, but I think there's a chance of some dollars or some uh, some values above five dollars uh, uh, on December. It might not be very high, to, uh, five and a quarter, uh, something like that. But uh, keeping those in mind. Uh, uh, we probably will have a pretty slow December here after uh, we get the U.S. transportation system uh, shutting down. 